But I'll end <coughs> with what may appear at first to be a funny story, but you'll get the message of it. And it's a story actually about Paddy. As I say, Paddy became the most um, enthusiastic uh, new Christian imaginable. <coughs> and there was one uh, uh, unusual symptom of this, apart from the other things I've described, like him giving up his drugs and so on. One uh, afternoon he popped up in the prayer group and said, you know, I've been thinking and I've been worrying, and um, one of the things I've been worrying about that my family, and I've never done anything but, but trying to bring them up in a Christian way. <clears throat> How could I? I wasn't a Christian myself. But um, my wife, I'm now reconciled with, um, she gave me the great news that she's pregnant. And um, this, this sort of, since I came to jail just uh, four or five months ago, this has all happened, and I'm so excited. And my uh, new baby's going to be born in a few weeks' time. And I've already been to the chaplain to ask whether uh, he will baptize her in the, uh, in the chapel. Um, I think the chaplain was a bit surprised to be asked to <laughs> baptize a baby who hadn't been born yet. But <coughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and by this time we were, we were all in an open prison, things were a bit easier. So, lo and behold, after some discussion, we were able to have the baptism service of. Uh, 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 he was a Catholic, so it was done according to the Catholic traditions, but um, of Paddy's newborn daughter in the prison chapel. And I remember that um, uh, baptism service for as long as I live, for a variety of reasons, some of them humorous, some of them emotional, some of them deeply spiritual. Get the humorous ones out of the way first. Uh, Paddy, who had not totally lost his cunning, even though he'd become a um, good Christian, uh, managed to get delivered to the prison uh, a box containing, I think, 12 bottles of liquid. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and, of course, they were not immediately allowed in. Um, <clears throat> but Paddy said um, they were uh, for the baby's refreshment during the... Um, <laughs> <coughs> and there was a rather decrepit old uh, prison officer uh, um, who wearily said, it's an awful lot of bottles for a baby's christen. What do you do, you know, uh, <coughs> baptizing? Uh, and Paddy quickly said, sir, sir, she's a very thirsty baby. So <laughs> very <ter> <coughs> uh, I think of those 12 bottles, at least sort of three of them contain neat vodka, so an absolutely fantastic party was had. Afterwards, that's another story. The other humorous thing about the uh, baptism service was the baby's dress. Um, as soon as I saw this baby in her dress, I said, this is a christening dress worthy of a princess. Yards and yards of expensive flowing white silk, um, wonderful sort of designs and bows and ruffles all over it. Could have been made by Dior or Balenciaga or Stella McCartney. It was absolutely magnificent. <coughs> and, um, uh, and then as I looked a little more closely, I suddenly realized that actually this was not a baby's christening dress. It was an adult lady's bridal gown. And if I'd had to guess which particular lorry it had fallen off the back of, <laughs> uh, I would have guessed quite quickly that it had fallen off the back of a lorry on the way to the outsize woman's shop. Uh, because uh, it was a ginormous, uh, uh, I mean, you know, made for a double bride, or made, made for a Wagnerian soprano or something. Uh, and as soon as this tiny little baby was lowered into this vast, uh, ginormous lady's bridal gown, she looked like a tiny little boat being launched into huge billowing white waves. And the inevitable happened, the boat capsized, uh, not once but several times. And as the good Catholic priest got going on the baptism service, suddenly the baby slid off into the right hand side and completely vanished from sight. And uh, Paddy's new best friends, all of whom remember the prayer group, rushed forward and in the nicest sort of rescued the baby, pulled her out, uh, uh, saying things like, God bless you, my darling, give a kiss. And there she was, bang in the center of the uh, bridal gown, and then whoops, she shot him down. <laughs> and the whole process started over again. Before we knew where we were, we had a real audience participation service. People were coming, going, pulling the baby up, <coughs> and uh, centering her down. And um, anyway, as I watched this, at first, like some of you, I was sort of superficially amused. Um, and then I 
next thing I started to do was to feel terribly sorry for the baby who was having a rough time. Whoops, she was on the left hand side <laughs> and being pulled out. And, um, and I felt very protective towards this tiny little baby for a rather special reason. Paddy had done me the great honor of uh, asking me to be uh, a godfather of the Christian variety um, <coughs> to, this, uh, <laughs> uh, to this small baby. So I, I felt honored by that, but, and I really felt sort of very protective toward this poor little baby. But so did everyone else in the chapel. Um, I've never been in a service which there was more love, more kindness, these guys sort of holding the little babies, pressing a tiny little hand, God bless him, it was going on like this. And I started to be moved. And then I started to have a spiritual thought, and it was this, and it all comes back to the word transformed. I said, what is happening here? Uh, here we are, a whole lot of uh, criminals in a jail. Um, we were instantly, it was happening about a week before Christmas, 1999. And so, and this, somehow the sort of metaphor of this innocent young uh, child, newborn child, whose innocence contrasted very sharply with the uh, lack of innocence with everyone else in the room. And yet, these guys who'd uh, done such bad crimes were behaving almost angelically. They were rushing forward, they were saying these prayers. And I said to myself, why, you know? These fingers, these hands who today, you know, praying over the little baby, touching her little hand, being so gentle, so soft. These were hands who a few months ago had uh, fingers on triggers, uh, outstretched hands in drug deals, fights, violence, and yet there they are behaving <coughs> so softly, so gently, so prayerfully. Why? Because they have changed, because they have been transformed. Who has transformed them? The person who's been transforming people for 2,000 odd years, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who was always transforming people. Mary Magdalene, the prostitute, um, Zacchaeus, the corrupt businessman, Saul of Tarsus, murderously stoning people one minute, Paul the great apostle the next. That is Jesus's um, power for us, that he transforms us. But we have to make the first move. And I'll end this uh, talk before I just say one last thing. It's my prayer. Whenever I look at an audience, I don't know who's in it, but I say, I just pray there's one person here tonight who will say to themselves what Paddy said to himself that day when we were having coffee. You know, I'd really like to try that path myself. If you will here, starting with the pastors, who would love to help you, I pray that there will be somebody who will want to try and get on that path themselves, because as I know, the path to transformation is the greatest and the most blessed path that you can find in this life. God bless you all and thank you.